So this mindful session is for anybody who is a caregiver, um, works in a professional context where, for example, they are working with, um, for example, in residential homes, um, working in the NHS, um, you could be a therapist, um, basically any kind of challenging interaction or relationship where you need to feel protective of your own boundaries. So compassion fatigue or compassion burnout is the major topic here. Now, um, the reason why we're doing this practice, obviously, is um, when you're witnessing somebody else's pain, you have something called empathetic resonance where your own pain is triggered well, the pain centres in your own brain is also triggered and it can be incredibly draining. Um, the so-called happiest Buddhist monk, Matthew Ricard, um, he did um, an experiment with a brain scan and he was watching two hours of incredibly suffering um, children that were found in orphans. And he was explained, I watched this video and he said it was, they were so weak and so tired, their bones break even if they walked. And he said for two hours he watched this and he said he was absolutely exhausted. Now, the moment that he practiced mindful self-compassion, he was practicing mindfulness, by the way, while he was watching these, these, this very extended video. The moment he started practicing mindful self-compassion, um, he felt rejuvenated and could cope. Um, and that was an experiment he did um, where his brain centres showed this empathetic resonance where this part of his brain was obviously being triggered, where the pain for him, that was triggered. So um, what happens when you are having to be in an interaction with somebody um, or work in a professional context where somebody is suffering? Now... Um, what happens is you might become an incredibly avoidant person as a reaction to this compassion uh, fatigue or compassion burnout. You may feel distracted, you may be angry, you may be irritated, you may be rest restless, you may have insomnia. But what it does basically is it totally drains your energy. OK, I'm not saying it's like what we did in the shadows that, you know, that uh, you're hanging around people like Colin Robinson, who is a psychic vampire. But what I'm suggesting is that um, unless you're protective of your boundary by using compassion, and it's very, very difficult to actually avoid this scenario, isn't it? Because if you're actually in a professional job like a therapist working in the NHS or you're working in a care home or you have a parent that you have to care for or a child as well. It's also those kind of professions, a family member. It's very hard to draw and put down these emotionally bound boundaries. And it's OK doing self-care activities like booking yourself in for a facial or um having a nice comforting bath or a lovely meal or doing all these self-care activities, but their usefulness is incredibly limited. Um, it doesn't help you in the middle of the caregiving action. So um, there is a confusion between what empathy fatigue is and what compassion fatigue is. Empathy fatigue is a bit of a misnomer, really. Empathy is when you walk in somebody else's shoes. You feel the pain as if it's happening to you. And that causes empathetic distress and that's the empathetic resonance. Now, compassion is completely different. It's the energising thing. It's the I feel you, I see you, I hear you. And you're, what you're doing is you're giving yourself compassion at the same time as you're being compassionate to another person. So it's like the metaphor that we always use, don't we? You're on the, um, you're on the plane and you're learning the in-flight safety and you put the mask on before you put it on anybody else. So caring for yourself is not selfish because it allows you to care for others. It retains your sense of self. It's without need for core detachment. It allows yourself to create boundaries. Um, it means that you are not fixing people because you can't fix people. It means that you can feel their pain, 
but not take it on board. It means that you can feel connected from them, but emotionally disentangled, which means that there is this nice separation and boundaries. So you can totally understand that the person that you are with, whether it's a small child, an older parent, or um, when you're in a therapy context where you're NHS or whatever, that these people have totally separate, unique lives and there is nothing you can do about them because you cannot fix anybody. You just can't. Um, you cannot help anybody. And that's the whole mantra of mindfulness, isn't it? You can't fix and you cannot help anybody. Okay. You have to look after yourself first. So we're going to do the mindfulness meditation because I just want to get straight on with it very, very quickly because I realise I talk too much and that's important. Now, um, it's very important that after your mindfulness exercise, you have some period of reflection so you can process the experience. Um, I know I always talk about the way that we sit, the way that we hold ourselves and the way we practice our uh, mindfulness, but I want you to be not too attached too much to the formal logistics of it, just in case that anything challenging comes up. Remember, you have your um, resourcing tools to help you. Um, I posted um, two uh, A4 um, handouts which were all about resourcing tools on our page, which would really, really help you. I'll just remind you of them because I typed them up. They were very, very useful. I am going to put a resource. We're going to do a resourcing tool right at the beginning of the session because I think it's very, very useful. Um, the resourcing tools there are for emotional challenge and keeping you inside of your window of tolerance. Now, obviously, window of tolerance, if you're up there, hyper, fight, flight, and you will notice that in your body before you actually uh, clock it uh, mentally because you will feel that pain in the chest or in or that hollowness in the abdomen. OK, um, or if you go into hyper, which is where you go listless and sort of completely daydream and sort of go a little bit sort of out of it, uh, disassociating, if you know what I mean. Um, so I did post those. I will go back to them just to remind you what they are. But please do have a look at them because they're very, 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 very useful. Um, whenever you come to any kind of emotional challenge at any point within any experience that you're having, um, if you have a history of flashbacks or whatever in it, of challenge, that will be really, really good. So um, I did post that you can orientate where you know where you are in time and space using your five senses. We will do that. So things that you can see, things that you can hear, things that you can taste and so forth, things that you can feel. Um, grounding, again, feeling the contact of your body and anything that's supporting your body. Um, coming to your breath, but being centered by focusing on the abdominal area. Um, labeling, because we name it to tame, don't we? Uh, remember, focusing on somatic experience in the physical body is incredibly important because when we feel, we can heal a little bit more. Um, refocusing on something completely different. And that also means that when I'm talking about not being attached to formal logistics is do not carry on with the practice if it causes any challenge. And that means stop it altogether. Um, and pendulation is you find a part in the body which feels numb or comfortable and you go backwards and forwards between the site of constriction and sensation because emotions are always felt in the body and you go backwards and forwards. That feels good. So please do check them out. OK, they are posted in our group, play, group page, resourcing tools, handouts. So let's make a start with the practice. Let's get formal. OK, so we will use the bell. Again, don't be attached with formal logistics. In your seated practice, do whatever feels comfortable for you, even though we talk about traditional sort of Buddhist techniques. If you feel as though you're too attached to that practice, it feels a little bit too much like being told what to do. So whatever feels comfortable for you, eyes closed, soft gaze. If you want to lay on your back, as long as you know you're not going to go fall to sleep, as long as you're aware of what you're doing. And obviously, let's start then. So I'll just ring the bell. And I just want you to notice three things that you can see within your space. So we're going to orientate. So if you feel uncomfortable about doing a practice with your eyes closed, you can do a hind brain uh, 
meditation practice where it is you keep your eyes open and you can shift your gaze whenever needed. So three things you can see, two things that you can hear, sound of my voice, sounds inside of this room and outside of this room, and one thing that you can feel without being stuck too much to the formal logistics find a comfortable position just take a few deep breaths in the abdomen just to settle into your body and into the present moment and as with any practice if you get distracted we come back to our focus you might like to put your hand over your heart or wherever it's comforting and soothing just as a reminder to bring affectionate awareness to your experience and that you are practicing self-care for yourself so dropping into your seat focusing on your breath into the moment don't worry if you're distracted come back to that Bring to mind someone you are caring for who is exhausting you or frustrating. Someone you care about who is suffering. And for this introductory exercise, choose someone who is not your child, as this can be a much more complicated dynamic. See if you can visualise that person and the caregiving situation clearly in your mind. And see if you can notice and sense physically the struggle in your body. Just take some time to do that. Don't worry if your mind wanders, just come back to the breath and to the focus and to your seat. I'm going to say a few words and I want you to let them gently roll through your mind. You might want to repeat each sentence after me inside, connecting with your heart space. We are each on our own life journey. I'm not the cause of this person's suffering. Nor is it entirely within my power to make it go away. Even though I wish I could. Moments like these are difficult to bear. And yes, I may still try to help if I can. And with a mindful and awareness of the stress that you're carrying in your body. Just inhale fully and deeply, drawing compassion inside of your body, imagining that you're filling each cell of your body with compassion. Let yourself be soothed by inhaling deeply and by giving yourself the compassion you need. As you exhale out, exhale out the compassion to the person who's associated with your discomfort.
breathing compassion in for yourself, allowing your body to find that natural breathing rhythm, letting your body breathe itself without control, just breath awareness, not breath control. And breathing out for the other person. And just keep aware of your internal landscape of any distress or responsiveness as you visualise and imagine that you're breathing in for yourself and exhaling for the other person. It's perfectly fine to breathe in more for yourself if you feel as though you need it. Or if you find that person needs an extra bit of compassion, focus your attention more on your out breath. Just keep visualising that direction of where the breath is going. Compassion in for me. Compassion out for you. And keep that visualisation. If it helps, you can use an image. It's almost as if you're passing that compassion backwards and forwards. If it helps, you can repeat the phrases again. We are each on our own life journey. I am not the cause of this person's suffering. Nor is it entirely within my power to make it go away. Even though I wish I could. Moments like these are difficult to bear, yet I may still try to help if I could. And just sit with that breath, compassion for me, compassion for you. Keeping that focus. The moment you notice that your mind wanders, you come back simply to the breath. Compassion for me on the in breath. Compassion for you on the out breath. And if you feel like there is an equal exchange, even if you want to, or if you want to give a little bit more to you or to them, do what feels right for you. And then when you feel ready, just let go of your focus. Just allow yourself to be as you are. Simply being. Just allow everything to come in and out of your conscious awareness without attaching or grasping or following or tracking. Drifting in and out sounds Images, emotions, feelings, sensations. Just 
just be as you are and if you get distracted just come back to the breath until you feel as though you're ready to let go and just let things come in and out of your conscious awareness just be as you are open spacious aware in this present moment. Okay, so if you can mentally reflect on that experience, it's very important because it helps you to process it. Just notice how you felt during that practice. Were you able to adjust the flow of compassion for you? Did it work? Okay, so if you're interested, if you work in a caregiving, if you're a first responder, this is a really good book that I just bought. I haven't started reading it much yet. Uh, I'm just dipping in at the moment. Um, it's called Mindfulness for Warriors, and it's for first responders to build stress um, when you're face to face. This is for police officers, NHS workers, people who are ambulance, all sorts of first responders here. Um, also could be used for the army, for example. Not read it yet. I'm just halfway through reading two really good books at the moment in my topic field.